Hi folks, please meet the pimp. Solanum pimpinellifolium, the other tomato. Yeah, it's actually called the pimp because of the Latin name Solanum pimpinellifolium. It's also known as the wild tomato or the current tomato. First time I saw this, those little beauties, I didn't buy them because I thought, well, okay, after those breeders have marketed dozens, maybe hundreds of cherry tomato varieties, now they are just going a little bit smaller with those pea-sized tomatoes. I thought that this is just Solanum lycopersicum, but nope. This is a different, legitimate tomato species. Well, it's not that simple because because we don't actually know where the domesticated tomato comes from. And one theory is that Solanum pimpinellifolium is actually the wild form of the tomato. It is genetically very close to our tomato, Solanum lycopersicum. Well, both are, of course, in the section lycopersicum of the genus Solanum, or you could say in the genus lycopersicum, which means tomato. And yeah, there is a theory that those little things are the wild form of the domesticated tomato. Well, by domesticating the tomato, humans first, of course, uh, selected the bigger fruit. And then later, they also selected fruit with many carpels to have more flesh and less juice. And yeah, the Solanum pimpinellifolium, well, the name refers to the different shape of the leaves has never been truly domesticated. This is basically what the wild fruit look like. However, it is cultivated commonly as a heirloom tomato in private gardens. It's not being marketed a lot because it's quite a lot of work to collect all those little fruit there. It's marketed more as a um, sort of uh, yeah novelty. Well, so there is this theory that it's the ancestor of the uh, common tomato, but there is also genetic evidence which puts it as a sister taxon to a group of, um, well, of Solanum lycopericum and Solanum chesmania. So it seems that Solanum chesmania is closer related to our domesticated tomato. But they all hybridize freely. This thing also hybridizes with uh, tomatoes from the Galapagos Islands. It is growing wild in the coastal areas of northern Chile and southern Peru on the equator until about 500 meters above sea level. Populations from Ecuador and from higher areas are considered to be feral populations of hybrids between this tomato and the normal tomato because they have different leaves and also different, um, different hairs on the plant. But yeah, definitely there is a group of closely related tomato species which hybridize freely. And this stuff is being hybridized a lot with our tomato, introducing um, disease-resistant traits and also just helping to create new varieties. You hybridize this with any tomato variety, you get something which you could develop into a new tomato variety. Normally the berries are uh, red, but this is a yellow version I'm I think I saw the red one somewhere, but um, yeah, I got the yellow one. Also, I saw those things on a stall on the market of Mannheim two weeks ago. And from the, from the stage in which those tomatoes were when I bought them yesterday, I kind of suspect there might have been the same ones I saw two weeks ago, because most of them are pretty shriveled up. I had to remove a lot of rotten fruit and so on. So when I do the test taste test, I don't think that they will be in their prime taste-wise. Yeah, a lot of them are still, are still quite, uh, are still uh, quite uh, plump and full of juice, but some of them also have started drying up. I mean, it's the, it's the huge uh, surface area compared to a small volume. First, let's try one of those dried up fruit. 
Looks like a tomato. Yeah, like cherry tomatoes. Like overripe cherry tomatoes. Pretty, pretty nice. Like a nice sweet cherry tomato. However, the skin is very tough for a tomato that size. I would have expected it to have a very thin and soft skin like the uh, like the Solanum nigrum group. I mean, they they have fruit which are <laughs> sometimes that size, but they are, they they are very easy to pop in your mouth. Well, those here, yeah. A small tomato with a tough skin. I don't know if this has been bred in order to allow easier harvesting. It said that the species is not domesticated, but that those are the wild forms. But I wonder if the wild tomato... Well, there are a lot of Solanum species with very tough skin on the fruit. Though this could be natural. But yeah, taste-wise, this thing is well inside the tomato range. The only thing that is surprising to me is the skin, which is basically like the skin of a big tomato. And I would have... Bah, this one was bad. I would have expected the skin to be much more tender and thin in those tiny tomatoes. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, not bad as a snack. I mean, as a snack, I would still prefer cherry tomatoes. They're a little bit bigger. But yeah, <laughs> definitely a funny thing to have. Try it at least once or maybe even several times. Good for breeding modern tomatoes. Unfortunately, it's invasive in the Galapagos Islands where it also basically destroys native tomato species by interbreeding. But yeah, an interesting little tomato. Now, folks, this was the pimp or the wild tomato or the current tomato, Solanum pimpinellifolium. Stay tuned for a lot more fruit videos from the beautiful country of Germany where they apparently also grow wild tomatoes. And don't forget to like, share, comment and subscribe.